I was about to, you know, head to bed and read my book, but for whatever reason, the universe called me to your live, and mm. I sat there and I watched it, and you kind of started diving into a little bit more of this, the center of your maze thing, mm. and I was asking, trying to get a question with you in last night, and didn't get it, but that's okay, and then shortly after your video, um, there was a, a, a clubhouse room that I popped into that... Um, a couple of people that you um, talk with on stage were there, and um, I forget her, her name now, it's not coming to me, but anyways, Lisa Grossman. Um, yeah, she's and, amazing. Um, yes, and they were talking about some of the things that you were talking about last night, about being the center of your maze, and mm. um, this being accepted, and it's interesting how the world just kind of like keeps kind of this keeps showing up in my life. And did did they, they went, did they reference where I got center of the maze, or are they just are they? They actually. Um, I can't remember the gentleman now. I don't have him on the front of my. Yeah. Side, oh, don't worry, reference, don't worry. He about. did reference you actually. He did yeah. reference. He, he said Ray had been, and he was talking. I ho I hope people I hope people do like because I got that specifically from a, a weird location, which is Westworld. In Westworld, I explain this, and you you know this, but for other people, I think people may wonder where'd that term come from? It actually came from Westworld, where they said they had to learn that they had to program the robots, the hosts, with a traumatic incident for them to be compliant to their programming, which is very deep. If you think about that, and the more the more that I dig into this stuff, the more I'm like, my God, was Matrix an amazing movie? And and so anyway, so um, yes, sorry. I just quickly looked it up. It was Sean Murphy. Yeah, I love Sean. He's amazing. So he has a group called Unbelieve, Un, Unbelievable, I think it is on Facebook or something like that, which I joined. But mm -hmm. anyways, he was talking, and I and it was like. He was. He didn't call it the center of the maze, but it was like basically the same analogy. Okay. Um, and and so last night, you know, went to bed and I had this dream, which I very rarely remember my dreams, and it was about trying to find the center of my maze. Mm -hmm. And my question last night was, is because I feel like even the gal who just spoke, Cassandra, mm -hmm. and the gal beforehand, like mm -hmm. I had knee pain last night, yeah. and I've had cortisone shots in my knee yeah. um, about six months ago, and the doctor's like, well, I only do them every six months, they last about four, some people never need them again, blah, 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 blah. Um, now, did you, have a, did you have a traumatic incident so that you can link to it and justify it, or did it just come out of nowhere? Um, you know, I had, I, I used to work, um, in the yachting industry and okay. as crew and mm. um i did fall in the engine room one one time okay. on some you know metal flooring and screwed up my back and my knee and Got my it. ankle and the whole nine yards and i think you know that's the only thing that i can really relate it to other than just maybe poor shoes when i was growing up because i was mm -hmm. poor and i played soccer and was in cheerleading and things like that but sure um you know okay. My mom passed away in August, and sorry to hear that. Thank you. And it was suddenly unexpected. And shortly after that, man, I had some extreme pain, some extreme pain in you know my like SI joint and um, just in my hips and in my knee. And it was just like I, I was like it came out of nowhere. And um, and I was like, man, maybe it's just because of that fall and I didn't heal correctly or maybe I'm not taking care of my body the way that I should or I haven't been you know exercising as much as I should and I'm with you I think that it's you know a lot of it is emotional mm -hmm. and um and so working through you know this does not serve me and so I went to physical therapy was like doing all the things like that you were talking about I was like wow you just totally hit home with me today on so mm -hmm. many aspects but um was doing all those things and my physical therapist was like giving me um like uh, motivational things and to think things to think about and he he said to me when I went in there one day he said man he said this this 
this is really like this is really affecting you like your the loss of your mother and like so many other things were going on in my life and i was like yeah and so it was interesting because the end of the year my physical therapy ended and shortly thereafter after i walked through that season with with them and the exercises and doing all the things and and the things that he was giving me my pain went away and it was like a light switch like you said it was the craziest thing Mm -hmm. and so now you know we're nearly six months into the year and no pain there and feeling great but then last night i started to have knee pain um in one of my knees and i was like okay like what did i do well, I started prospecting and doing something that I felt uncomfortable with. And so then this leads me back to the whole, like trying to find the center of my maze Mm -hmm. and where this resistance is. And so my question today is, is that if you could give a tip, because I know you paid a lot of money to get to the center of your maze Mm -hmm. and you're doing a lot of amazing things to work through some of the things in your past. Right. And, um, you know, I valued you so much before that, but but like that just like pushed me over the over the top. I was just like, man, wow. Mm. Um, so thank you for all that you do to serve your community again. But yeah. if you could give one tip or walk through, how would you give somebody a tip in trying to walk out and figure out what the center of their maze is and how to get to the ground of that or the center of that so that they can um, walk out the limiting sure. beliefs or the things that have been, that keep showing up in their life. Sure. Um, so one, know that, um, so if we know that it's a protection pattern, um, so f- first I would, oh, let me think about this. Um, Cause it's such a specific location to actually get to the root. And, and I've heard arguments that you don't need to like, you know, I've heard, um, I, I don't, when I'm, when I'm critical of, of a trainer, I don't like to call them out. Um, but I I've seen, um, you know, trainers that have been around that they're like, you don't need to figure out your past, just focus on your future, where you're going. And um, I, I can't speak for everyone, um, but for me, it was very, very beneficial to figure out what happened, like what got me here. And and so um, one is if you understand that it's protection related, it is not something that ever happens. So it's, you know, it's, it's, so something could happen, the death of somebody, right? Um, so something could happen, but that I don't believe. And again, I am not the expert. I'm just sharing what I've learned over the years by investing a lot of money <laughs> and time yeah. into this stuff. Um, <laughs> And, and so um, something could happen to trigger something, but it's not the thing that happened, it's the conclusion of where you have to go because of what happened. So it's the pattern, the protection pattern is always you're going into a territory that doesn't feel safe. So for me, the most important like step one is where's the pattern? So my first kind of layer, I would say there's, there's been three, it took me three layers to get to the the center layer one, I got help through landmark. So landmark forum helped me understand by looking at my patterns that I had a programming, they, they call it uh, your act. And so your act is a, um, statement it's not always a command it's not always um i'm trying to think could it be a question no it's not a question it's a statement so it's a statement that was generated when you were younger right usually you know between five to eight or something like that Uh, but it could it could be later it could be a little bit earlier so my statement was i'll show you that was the first layer to get toward the center so 
how did, how did I figure that out? Well, Landmark helped, but they helped me understand a pattern. So how far do I want to go back here? Uh, so I've had that defiance of if you doubt me, you're fueling me. But the problem with that is if you don't recognize it, you require it. So I remember, uh, I'll just go back to 19. When I was 19 years old, I was working at, um, I was working at uh, GNC and you know, selling vitamins and stuff. And when I applied there, when I applied there, they, they had a full-time position. And uh, so I applied for the full-time position. And um, they, they say in the interview, they're like, you know, you know, we're not sure that you're going to be able to cut what we're looking for sales wise. So we're going to hire you part time and let's just see how it works out. I mean, that's the perfect thing to say to someone like me because m and I'm going to show you. So I broke every record they ever had. <laughs> I went in there. I sold. I'm, I'm, I'm selling. Someone comes in for a candy bar. They're getting B vitamins. They're getting Cetamar Stolia. They're getting glucosamine, chondroitin. They're getting vitamin E. They're getting Mega Man. They're getting, you know, whey protein. They're getting, hey, how's your eyeballs? Get some Bilberry, some Eyebright. Like they're getting everything on the planet. And they like watched in amazement as I crushed every record they ever had. And, and so then I went to, you know, full time, then part store, uh, uh, assistant manager, then store manager. And so I decide at 19 that I want to learn uh, computers. And so I, I, I went, you know, I climbed the rank. I was recognized nationally. They have a magazine that came out and they're like, holy shit, look at the store average, right? And, um, and so I climbed, I climbed the ranks. And then I, I was talking to one of my buddies who is a computer nerd. And, um, and I went to him, I'm like, man, you know, I'd really like to learn how to use the computer. Cause I didn't know how to use a computer at 19. I'd never done anything with it, with a computer. And everyone was telling me, you gotta learn computers, man. That's the future. And I know millennials on here are like, whoa, how old is this dude? Right. Um, and, uh, and so I go to my friend and I say, Hey man, could you teach me, you know, computers? Cause I, I don't know anything about them. I'm sure I need to learn more. And so, he, he helps me. I buy a computer off him. And he's like, all right, left click that. And I'm like, what? And he's like, left click. I'm like, uh, what are you saying? What do you mean? Is that a button? Like, what, what do you mean? And uh, he's like, whoa, you could never do computers, dude. Bing! That's what I need to hear, man. And so I left GNC. <laughs> I went to work for Sony in their IT uh, customer support. And I like they when they learned of my lack of knowledge about computers, they're like, how, how are you going to support computers like you, you don't know anything? And I'm like, oh, no, I can do it. I'm learning and it is and that. And so what did they do? They doubted me. So in 90 days, I got the highest review they had ever given a 90 day employee. Because I, I just under I, 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 I comprehended their blueprint. I studied the blueprint. I nailed the blueprint. And so in 90 days, my manager said, dude, I've like I asked the other managers. This is the highest review anyone in 90 days has ever received in the history of this building. <laughs> and so notice something else is happening. In GNC, I had arrived. People no longer doubted me. At Sony, three months in, get the highest review ever because they doubted me. Fourth month, I left because I had nothing to prove. I had proven it. In my head, I was no longer doubted, so I proved it, right? And so I go into, you know, yada, yada, yada. I go, go. So I go. Now, my, my, my computer nerd friend sent me on a seven-year journey where I ended at, in Redmond at Washington uh, applying for SQL Server team for Microsoft. And I come up with this realization that I really don't even like computers. Why am I doing this? Like I used to like sales and stuff. Like I miss my GNC days, like selling stuff. Like I like that stuff. I don't even like computers. Why have I been doing this for seven years? Because I was on autopilot with no realization, with no awareness. 
And so here's how you'll see this played out in network marketing it happens all the time is someone will be doubted. And so they'll go and they'll prove you wrong. They'll prove their spouse wrong. They'll prove their friends wrong. They'll prove their neighbors wrong, their Facebook people wrong. And they'll get to a high level. And then the doubt is no longer there, so they seek it. And one day, this is this is gonna, this is this is going to place a scalpel and do a slight frontal lobotomy on a lot of top earners right now that hear this. If they're on here, this is this this is going to mess you up because you don't understand how much I understand you. <laughs> so the person that seeks doubt, they always locate it because we seek what we we find what we seek. Right. The thinker thinks the prover proves you find what you seek. You get to, you know, you that's just how it works. And so that person that was doubted that goes and gets six figures, seven figures, whatever. Uh, and no one's no one's doubting them anymore. And they crave it, man. It's a chemical that that, you know, people like me need unless we're aware of it. That awareness allows us to get off the addiction. And so they're seeking doubt. And then one day at a, at a network marketing, uh, you know, uh, event. One of the company execs will say something to them, and it'll be, it, it may not be on purpose. It may not be even what they meant, but they'll say something like, yeah, man, you really came in at the right time. And they'll think, what? Are you saying I couldn't rebuild this? Are you saying I got lucky? I'll show you. They'll go to a different company, and they'll bash the old company for reasons that make no damn sense, for things that they completely made up. And they will go and crush it in that company until someone doubts them, and then they'll go to the next one. They will seek it. So if you're not aware of just a base level of your patterns and your programming, then you're kind of the helpless passenger. You're just like, uh, what's that movie? Is it iRobot? Where you just kind of sit in the car and it drives you to places and then you're allowed to get out, right? Like you're, you're just, you're a passenger because you're on autopilot. I was a passenger on autopilot. I'll show you, I require doubt. And so with awareness, and I'll tell you about when I became the number one income earner in a company, I started doing my thing. I started looking at, uh, you know, hey, people kind of believe in me now, this sucks. Huh, oh, oh you think I can do it now, huh? huh. That sucks. I wonder what people think I can't do. <laughs> and so I almost about, you know, you know, maybe a year into being the top earner of that, of that, and, and I sabotage it. I'm gonna tell you something I have never, I, I don't think I've ever shared before, but I was starting to sabotage myself. I don't think I've ever shared this before. On the month that I earned the BMW 7 Series, I got a reckless driving ticket and my license was suspended. Oh, man. That is someone screaming to sabotage. I was scream. my subconscious is screaming for me to screw things up because that was my identity. I'm someone that had all the potential, but always screwed things up. And so that base level, that me being aware of, oh, I seek doubt. I no longer have to seek doubt. It's still powerful, I can still tap into it. So I, I, I do, you know, in a weird masochistic way, love being doubted, like I still love it to this day, but I don't require it, I don't need it. So someone telling me that I can't do something is so delicious to me, right? I just, I just, I savor it, I love it, but I don't require it, which is the key, okay? The second level, is this helpful so far or am I off base with your question? No, you're, you're going great. Right. Thank you. Second level happened, um, you know, uh, a year, two years ago, a year and a half ago, maybe? I think a year and a half ago. And it's where, um, you know, I, I won't go into full details, but basic, basically, I, with help, okay? So notice I had help, Landmark, Landmark Forum helped me. I think it's landmarkeducation.com for those who haven't heard it. I don't get a toaster if you sign up, but I've probably had you know 300 people go through it. Um, 
it, I, I will give them I will give them some criticism because hopefully they hear it and do something about it. They have gotten a lot softer. They used to be a lot tougher. They used to be a real. I mean, I, they were tough on me. They they were tough, man. And I reset it, and it was um, very, uh, you know, <laughs> current, soft. Um, and so, anyway, so the second time I had help again, there was a personality trait, and I described this in uh, rule number two of Time, Money, Freedom, and called Pluck Your Weeds. And so the second layer for me was I had help again, uh, my good friend Elliot Rowe who is a, a hypnotist, he's a performance coach, he coaches a lot of the UFC fighters, coaches a lot of World Series of Pokers players. And he helped me remember something that I had suppressed. And that is I had shared a lot of my abuse stories with a guidance counselor in third grade. And she went on to tell my parents everything I ever told her because she thought I was saying it for attention. That was a bad day. That was a very bad day. That I thought I had had pain prior to that day. I had not had pain prior to that day. Bad day. Um, and that was the day I stopped trusting anybody. And so since the third grade, I've kept everyone. And I don't care if you're a client. I mean, I have, I have clients that have, uh, I mean, I have probably mm, 10 clients that have paid me over $150,000. Doesn't matter. Even them, I would not let in. I would not let them in on my personal stuff. Now I may speak to them, you know, and help them with their personal stuff, but they ain't, they ain't hearing my personal stuff. Wouldn't let them in. And on, you know, and 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 I've I've weirdly created this mechanism of I'm able to share on video, I'm able to share from stage personal stuff, but one on one, that's too close for comfort. That's too dangerous. So I don't do it. So I push people away. And, and I share, I talked a little bit about this last night. You may have heard it, but um, so I realized that all of my social anxiety was not because I have the personal personality trait of introvert. It's because I'm protecting myself. If I keep everyone at, at arm's length, they can't hurt me like I was in the past. And so that awareness allowed me to alter how I function socially. And so I used to be the guy constantly asking my wife, do we have to go to this party? Seriously, we just saw him like a month ago. Like, do we have to go there? Um, hey, can we leave? You know, we've been here 30 minutes, 20 minutes. <laughs> can we leave? Can we just go, right? And so I used that used to be me. I was constantly trying to talk my social party animal wife out of being social. Or I would say, why don't you do girls night? Girls night, hey, I'll stay home, right? Much safer. And so awareness of that, which I had help, allowed me to change that. Um, the center of the maze, which I'm, I'm not comfortable talking about publicly, only because there are some relationships I haven't worked this out with, um, allowed me to understand the full picture. So how do you get there? I do not know. I do not know. Um, I don't know how you get there on your own, but my best, my, my suggestion is one, what I, what I have now learned, they call parts uh, therapy. Uh, is it parts therapy? Uh, don't quote me on this, but I'll tell you what it is, right? So I may, I may not have the name right, but it's where you take a look at your life and you take a look at um, some questions that'll help. Um, who hurt you is an easy one, right? Who hurt you? Who did you crave more love from? Which I know Tony Robbins loves that question. I, I, that's a great question. Who did you wish you had more love from? Who hurt you? Who betrayed you? Who disappointed you? Um, who abandoned you? And you ask those questions and then you become them and I, again, I'm not a professional, not a specialist. I've just done some of this work. You become them and you start asking yourself different questions and you decide that you're gonna ask the questions until you solve the maze. So when I became my stepmom, the one who abused me, many, many days I would go to school wearing a turtleneck 
because the claw necks on my mar on my on my neck were so deep. I remember, and I you know I share some of this in in the book. I remember one day being sick, and uh, I'm eating oatmeal, hated oatmeal first of all, and I'm sick. I throw up into my oatmeal, not on purpose, or maybe it was, maybe it was a Freudian thing. Like I'm hoping that gets me out of eating it because it sucks. Um, and um, or actually, I think it was um, what's that other stuff? It's not important, but whatever it was. And uh, she wanted me to eat it. I didn't want to eat it. So she stabbed me in the chest. All right. So not easy. And I'm sure that there's there, you know, you may be on here and you had it much tougher than me. I'm not pretending mine's the worst story of all time. But when I became her and I asked her as I asked me as her, why did you do that? At first, the answer was because I hate him. And I saw her gritting her teeth and I saw her bony fists because I'd seen it so many times. And, um, and I said, because I hate him. I can't stand him. I hate it that he is an offspring of my husband who is not with me and I hate him. And so after, you know, 10 minutes of hate, I got to, I did the best that I could. I was trying to make him tougher. I was trying to make him better in my own stupid way. And you can, I know that there'll be resistance there. I know that, you know, I'm, I don't even have to look at the comments. I already know that there are people who are like, no, that's never justified. No, I'm not justifying it. I'm not saying it's right. It was a terrible, horrible. No one deserves it. I didn't deserve it. I used to wonder if I did. I used to step into the, was I just a bad kid? Did I deserve it? I have it coming because I was a hellion, right? But that is not accurate. No kid deserves that, okay? So I'm not justifying it. I'm understanding it. You can understand and not agree, okay? And so that released some stuff for me. And there's some, there's some other things around that that I'm not comfortable sharing. I did share in the center of the maze, as you know, but I'm not comfortable sharing publicly because of who may see this. Um, but um, does that help? I've been talking for a really long time. <laughs> it absolutely helps. And um, just those, you know, who hurt me, who, who did I crave love from, who disappointed me, you know, who abandoned me, all of those things just, like, set off things in my mind that yeah. kind of brought me to the word that I was, that I, from watching you know, center of the base, and then last night, and then the room. Um, acceptance was the word that I was, that I was kind of, can kind of keep showing up. And so all of those, um, all of those questions will definitely help me uh, dig deeper. And, um, and by watching your video and like trying to position myself in those. And um, I think that a lot of this stuff, like, what I've recognized in the last, you know, since I lost my mom is, you know, I, I just am like, you know, there's a lot of questions and things that I won't get answered now. Um, but the fact that, uh, you know, we, we had a good relationship, but a broken relationship and, and, um, you know, it came to a point in her life where like I was her, it was more like I was the mom for many, many years, but she was somebody who like put me up on a pedestal and, and so, and she would always be super vocal about how much she loved me and the fact that she was my biggest cheerleader and there was no, no matter what the problem was or any, anything that was going on between us, there was never any lack of acceptance. But the fact that now that she's gone, I, I used the, the phrase that, that literally took me and like shook me out and turned me over. And like, I've got a yard sale going on now, like everything's out on the lawn and, um, and it's changed the racial relationship with my father and my father mm -hmm. and my mother have not been together since I was two years old. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so there's just been a lot of stuff that um, when I came into to you know the new year, I was just like, all right, January's going to be, or this year is going to be my year of growth. And 
So the universe just keeps showing up things on how to get my mindset right and how to work through some of these things that I know and I can visually see that have held me back in so many ways. And um, I just want to work through that and get out of get out of those things so that like you had said, you know, in, in the last couple of weeks, like you're experiencing life like you've never experienced before. And, you know, I'm grateful for every step of the way and I'm grateful for everything that I've walked through because, you know, just as you can say, it wasn't like something that anybody deserves, but it is what it made you. And, yeah. um, and it's working through those things to be an even better version of you so that you can serve your community and your family and yeah. everybody who you love and who you're yet to serve and who you're yet to love. Um, even better than you did even before. And yeah, so, um, so thank you so much yeah. for that. And uh, I just kindly appreciate you in so many ways. Appreciate that. You can find more great marketing, prospecting, and recruiting tips just like these over at rayhigden.com. And remember to pick up your free copy of his 29 sources of network marketing leads. We'll see you over there.